Our featured speaker this evening served in the Canadian military for 26 years. He specialized in wireless radio systems, radio warfare, and electronic warfare. I shouldn't be here. I should be at home in my garage making things out of wood. And I was up until about 22 months ago when my daughter called me. And she said, she knew that I was in radio communication for many years, but everything I did was covered by the Official Secrecy Act, so I couldn't, my family didn't know what I did. I did signals intelligence, electronic warfare, and radio warfare. So she knew I had a, a, like a radio background, and she said, Dad, do you know anything about smart meters? And I said, no, I don't. Um, she said, would you mind having a look at it? Because I've heard some pretty nasty things. She's married and has three children. And uh, so she was concerned. So I did, I, I had a quick look, and the very first thing I noticed was that they, the utilities are using wireless radio. That immediately raised an alarm in my head. I looked further and I realized to my horror that every smart meter has two radio transmitters inside, which the utilities don't tell you about. They only speak of one, but there are actually two radio transmitters inside. They're both pulsing microwave, which is the most dangerous thing to humans or any life form. I joined the Navy in 1952. The Russians started to um, irradiate the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. Nikita Khrushchev was the president at the time. And they experimented for 23 years. I got out of the Navy two years later. <laughs> so my period in the military embraced or bracketed, if you like, very nicely, the Russian experiment on American embassy staff. The staff were in the embassy there for the longest four years, the shortest period of time, two years. So their exposure time was maximum four years. What you're going to be exposed to here is for the rest of your life. They experimented with the same frequencies that are being radiated at you from your microwave oven, from your cordless, your, your Wi-Fi, your cordless phones, uh, baby monitors, uh, and a few of the devices which you'll cover. Two cons two consecutive uh, ambassadors died of cancer. Um, a third suffered leukemia-like symptoms, including like beating of eyes. He had to eventually be uh, repatriated to the US where he subsequently died of, of those injuries. At least 16 women contracted like breast cancer. Virtually all of the staff came down with illnesses of some form and they're listed there on the board for you. The shocking thing about this is the Americans found out about this within a year. Now, you would think that any democratic country would either defend their people or get them the heck out of there, but they didn't. They chose that opportunity to observe what was happening to their own staff, literally. They sent scientists over to, with instruments to determine what frequencies were they being irradiated, what powers, how long. They only did it for six to eight hours a day, five days a week. They waited for 10 years before they finally told their own staff. Oh, and the, by, I should mention, the power they radiated, in many, many cases, was less power than you're using your cell phone, your cordless phone, and your baby monitors, which I'll tell you about later. By 1971, the US uh, Naval Medical Research, and MRI, they had referenced 2,300 research articles listing more than 120 illnesses attributed to radio frequency and non-ionizing. By non-ionizing, they mean, like, for example, your, uh, your x-ray, that's an ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing means simply there's not enough energy there to liberate an electron. In 1975, the US Defense Intelligence Agency, the DIA, it warned its own people, all of its staff, of the dangers of low-level microwave radiation. And told them of the illnesses ranging from microwave sickness, which they've known about for over 50 years, uh, flu-like symptoms, depression, suicidal tendencies, to cancers and leukemia. We've known this for 50 years. We actually have known this for 60 years, but it's been kept secret. Barry Trower is a very um, distinguished scientist, British Army. My specialty was electronic warfare. His specialty was microwave warfare. His job, in part, was to debrief 
the defecting Soviet scientists when they defected to the West. And in his interrogations, he was able to compile a list of 31 specific frequencies that the Russians had determined with all their years of experience that specific frequency had a specific effect on a human body at a specific radiation rate. Very, very low power. Each of us is what they call a bioelectric being. We all have a very uh, fine or small, weak electrical current in us. It's a direct current, not alternating current. It's a direct current. It's about seven hertz. That's the frequency. And there's nothing more harmful to a, a bioelectric being like us or your animals like your pets at home or the birds, any living form, including plants, even bumblebees, than a pulsing microwave at the frequencies that we're getting them in all these devices we have, the worst of which, I will tell you, will be a smart meter. Uh, he has said, as you can read there and read, the saddest and most despicable document ever published in history. This is from the Freedom of Information Act. The document lists all of the health hazards caused by wireless devices and concludes they should be kept secret to preserve industrial profit. That was back in 1976. He went on to say, uh, he cited a 1950s report uh, stating, if this paper becomes uh, known around the world, it will threaten military and commercial interests. He especially condemned Health Canada's Code 6, which I'll tell you about, stating that the science-based safety level published in the Bioinitiative report which I'll also tell you about, um, which is 0 0.1 microwatt centimeter squared, not Canada's 600 to 1,000. But the frequency that we're talking about, 2.4 megahertz, it's actually 1,000 compared to that 0 0.1 which is recommended. Wireless devices all emit EMR. The device has been around the longest have been cell phones, so scientists have been able to experiment and examine uh, cell phones now for over 30 years. They know the, the harm cell phones cause. The point that I ask you to remember is that EMR is EMR regardless of source. When you use a smart meter, okay, it's whole body radiation. So to compare the two, you have to extrapolate that energy into a, the same unit of measurement as a smart meter. And this Dr. Daniel Hirsch, who's a nuclear physicist at the University of California, the Santa Cruz campus, he has com compared the two. Also, the Santa Cruz Public Health Department did an independent scientific study comparing the two. And their findings are quite shocking, very, very different than what any utility tells you. They say that as a minimum, that smart meter, and by the way, they're only talking about one radio, but there are two in there, which I'll tell you about later. And Hydro never talks about that second one, <laughs> conveniently. So the, they say that at minimum, that smart meter radiates at least 45 times more than your cell phone. And that's 10 feet away from the meter. If you're within three feet of that doggone meter, it radiates 450 times. Independent scientists say, this is the biggest single technological experiment mankind has ever endured without the knowledge or the consent of the public. And that's what's happening. In Europe, at least, and Europe is far ahead of us. In Europe, when you get a cordless phone, you hang it up, it shuts off the power. Not in North America. Why? Because they can get away with it. People just don't know somehow. The most dangerous thing, second only to a doggone um, smart meter. The Russians have come out and they essentially forbid anybody under 18 to be exposed to wireless. They're, I mean, they're the ones who did all this experimentation. They know what they're talking about and they won't let their kid, they won't have it in school. They won't allow it in school, but we do. The World Health Organization, they came out in May of 2011 and they announced to the world that EMR from any source is a possible carcinogen, like a class 2B. 2A is possible, 1A is definite, okay? They can't defend what they tell you. Dr. Annie Sasko, three Harvard degrees, PhD in epidemiology, 
Within the WHO, they have a, 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 an agency called the IARC, the International Agency for the Research in Cancer. She headed that up for 22 years. She oversaw all their studies. She's the previous director. Just last year, she said, and I can quote, despite what industry says, we have concrete, that's her word, not mine, we have concrete evidence that wireless devices and cell phones cause cancer. This year at the International Conference in London, England on cancer in children, she said EMR should be classified uh, to a, a probable cause of cancer. When she got back to France, to the university where, where she was teaching, her job was no longer there. That's what industry does. Just like the tobacco, exactly like the tobacco, only this is worse. At least with tobacco, if you smoked, I could close my door and my window. With this EMR, you cannot. It goes, it, well, the range is three kilometers in one and at least several hundred feet the other, and it goes through walls.